Well, here we're given a figure and one angle measurement. Let's find the other three. We've got some marks here. We've got a pair of parallel sides. That means well, it's a trapezoid or a parallelogram. But the other sides aren't parallel. They are instead congruent. So, as I recall, that would be an isosceles trapezoid. An isosceles trapezoid, there's a few things we know. Well, the base angles are congruent. Hey, I've got 100 here. I've got 100 here. Now, I also know this from way back when. Um, if the consecutive, well, parallel lines means that the consecutive interior angles must be congruent. So 180 is 180. And this one is 80 as well. Well, this figure, same as the last one, isosceles trapezoid. There's the trapezoid part. And of course, here's the isosceles, the two legs. And just like last time, I know I've got two theorems. So I've got those congruent angles. Now let's suppose, um, well, let's just put this 118 in there. We got that. Suppose I didn't think of this or didn't want to use it. I could just say, well, quadrilateral, 360 degrees. I take away the two 118s. I've got 124 left. Divide that by two and you've got 62. Well, is this a trapezoid? It would appear by theorem 815 that it is, but um, read that carefully. It says, if a trapezoid has a pair of congruent bases, base angles. Well, um, actually, it's, it doesn't say it's trapezoid to start with. Now, we could write a theorem for that, but let's just do something really quick here. I'm going to assign a value of r to the red angle, r for red and b for blue, then this equation is true. And a little bit of algebra gives me this. And then I could go back, I could go old school, go back to chapter 3. I've got consecutive interior angles that are supplementary, therefore I do have a trapezoid. Well, how about this figure? Is this a trapezoid? Well, it's a planar figure. And I've got these two segments perpendicular to the same one. Well, let's go way back to chapter 3. And we have a pair of parallel lines. This is a trapezoid. Now, this one is pretty peculiar, trying to determine if this is a trapezoid. You've got a pair of parallel lines here. You have one pair of opposite angles congruent. You think it's a trapezoid, but wait. Check this out. The two blue angles are each supplements of the red angles by theorem 3, 3. And they must be congruent then. And then the figure is a parallelogram. Now, that's not what the teacher edition says. But don't you like it when the book is wrong? Well, let's find the length of this mid-segment. Pretty straightforward here. I just averaged the bases. And I know it's 23. But just think about this. What does average mean? What's in the middle of these two numbers? Sometimes I find it helpful just to visualize. Just think. Two up from 21, two down from 25. That may come in handy when we're solving for the bases instead. Well, well, well. We have a mid-segment here, and we have a variable expression on one base. Well, this is just algebra. Remember, we add the two bases, base 1 plus base 2, divided by 2 equals the mid-segment. Now, in the numerator, I can, well, I can simplify that, 3x plus 16, and I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by 2. That's going to get rid of, well, that'll get rid of that, you know, that unsightly fraction. And now, well, subtract the 16 and divide, just algebra. Well, just like the last one, a little bit of algebra. I know I'm going to add these two bases. I'm going to take this base plus this base divided by 2 equals this mid-segment. And, you know, by now you got to get this down. Just multiply both sides by 2. Remember, you can when you do that, you're going to eliminate this 2 in the denominator. That's the key. Then it's just algebra from there. Well, short response number 28. 
I've got the diagram already laid out here uh, according to my text and I'll just get started. First I'm confirming it is a trapezoid. I've got a pair of sides here with a zero slope. Well that tells me I've got parallel sides. Now we've got the red and the blue diagonal. Let's go to town on that distance formula. Here on the red and um, you see I'm, I've already done the difference of the x's, the difference of the y's. Uh, save a step here from negative 5 to negative 1 is a distance of 4 from um, vertically from negative 1 to positive 5 is a vertical distance of 6 so there's your distance formula now I'm going to um, I'm going to factor this you could do it old school you could do it the other way but watch this is kind of slick and I come up with 2 radical 13 that's using that reduced triangle principle that I'm trying to get you guys to use. Um, now, you, again, you could have done that with, with uh, 16 and 36, and maybe you would have recognized this factor, but no, well, here it is. Let's stay, stay with it that way. Let's try the blue. Now, right away you see something is up. Now, you should just look at this, and you could say you're done. Um, if you want to conclude, that, um, that the two are just not congruent. Well, they're not congruent, and what does that mean? Uh, well, I think it means it's not an isosceles trapezoid. And that's about all I can see coming up with it from those two diagonals. I think that's what the author intended. Okay, we get to draw here. Let's um, make this trapezoid. I'm given these two segments, JK is parallel to, well, LM or ML, but it has to be trapezoid JK LM. So make sure you get them in the right order. And, um, well, I guess I should draw the legs. I don't know exactly what the figure looks like. Um, don't know the exact shape, but I'll just make it like that. And I'm going to put in a mid-segment. The mid-segment is known because that's going to be 37 units. So I've got one base and the mid-segment. And now I'm supposed to find the side or the length of the other well, base. Now, being a traditional guy, I could just say this. Well, the mid-segment here is base 1 plus base 2 over 2. And then I could do that. Do the substitution. I'll let this be base 2 and I'm going to set this equal to 37. See it works really slick. Remember multiply both sides of the equation by 2 and now I've got base 1 plus 17 is 74. Subtract the 17. That is correct but yeah, you know, this one was far more intuitive. You could just look at the picture and say the obvious. Say wait a minute this base is 20 less than 37. So this base must be 20 more than 37. I mean, after all, isn't a mid-segment I mean, the average? What is the average of two numbers? It's the number in the middle of the two numbers. So 20 under, 20 over, 57, done. Well, now this is a little more interesting. I've got some trapezoid here with a mid-segment of 24, and I know the ratio of the basis is 1 to 3. Well, the first thing I've got to do is assign some variables. I'm going to say that this one base is equal to x units. Well, if that one's x and the other one is 3 times, that's simply going to be 3x. You see where this is going, don't you? Uh, pretty straightforward. I'll just substitute into my handy dandy little formula here. I'm going to add base 1 plus base 2 and divide by 2. Now I can resolve this because x plus 3x is 4x. Half of 4x is 2x. So 2x is 24, each x is 12, and that means by substitution the bases are 12 and 36 respectively. Wow, this is exciting. Draw yourself a diagram. I already got it for you. Now look over here. It says rs is 5 times pq. So I'm going to assign a variable. 
I'm going to make PQ equal to my X. Well, if I do that, and look what it says. It says RS is 5 times X, or 5 times PQ. So I've got X and 5X for my bases. Well, can you solve for MN right now? I think you could do that without the algebra. And what's in the middle of 1X and 5X, you know that would be 3X. So I've got some variable. I don't know, I don't know what an X is. It doesn't matter. Because what I'm looking for is the ratio of MN to RS. So MN to RS, 3X to 5X, 3 giraffes to 5 giraffes, or in a ratio, 3 to 5. Well, number 40, this looks a lot like a proof. I've got these two triangles. I'm going to put them together to make a trapezoid. But first, let's review something. Let's review, oh yeah, the mid-segment theorem. So this blue mid-segment is half of this base. And this mid-segment is half of this base. And they're parallel to their respective bases. So let's just do this. Let's just slide this figure over like that. Oh, very nice. And what we've made is this trapezoid. Now, you can just see by addition, this blue segment is half of this one. And again, this orange is half of this one. So the entire mid-segment BE is one half of the two bases added together. And um, again, I've got par this side parallel to this one, this parallel to this. Uh, looks like they're all parallel to me. I guess that's more of a demonstration than a proof. We could add a little rigor, but that's all we were asked for. So there's your demonstration.